I occasionally get requests in the comments section under my videos for me to discuss certain topics in these videos. Uh, most of the time I try and accede to these uh, requests uh, if it's reasonable and I feel that uh, the uh, topic will interest a uh, larger number of people then I'll be happy to make a video. I, uh, I have gotten some recent requests to do videos on various anabolic steroids such as Anavar. However, I, I will not do any videos on steroids because for a number of reasons, not the least of which is a, it's a little known fact people don't realize that when you do uh, uh, YouTube videos on anabolic steroids, uh, the uh, Google who owns YouTube removes your entire channel from YouTube. <laughs> so um, I'm going to leave uh, the uh, steroid advice to the schmucks that don't know about this. That they, they're not going to be on YouTube very long because uh, YouTube uh, frowns upon giving any advice concerning anabolic steroids. So please don't waste your time asking me to write, uh, I mean, asking me to do videos on anabolic steroids of any type. I just won't do it. However, I do discuss aspects of anabolic steroids, although I don't provide programs on how to use steroids. I talk about general information about various steroids in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. So if you want to learn some uh, information about these particular drugs, you can subscribe, but I'm not going to discuss it in videos. But in that case, uh, in any case, I should say, uh, this video is going to be about a substance called pine pollen, which was a uh, request by a, one of the people that views my videos, left a uh, comment, uh, one or two people wanted a video on pine pollen. So here it is. Uh, I will say at the onset, there's really not much to say about pine pollen. Um, it's been used in Chinese medicine for over 3,000 years. It has a reputation as what they call an adaptogenic, similar to herbs in that it helps to modify the effects to, of, of uh, the effects of the human body to stress. It does a couple of other things, which, which I'll mention in this video. However, the main attraction by far related to pine pollen, I think, and I think this is the reason why I've had requests to do a video on this stuff, is because it has a reputation as containing testosterone. It shows up in, in many of the so-called testosterone boosting supplements. Now, what is pine pollen? I'll, I'll talk about whether, you know, the testosterone aspect in a minute, but pine pollen, just as the name implies, it's pollen from pine trees. And pine trees, basically pollen is a type of seed that basically, when it gets in the ground, it causes trees to grow. <laughs> it's that simple, really. And there's different types of, of, uh, of uh, pine pollen. The type that's most associated with testosterone is called Scots pine. Pine pollen is touted, as I say, as a natural source of testosterone, and it does exist in Scots pine. But here's, here's an important point. The amount of testosterone naturally contained in Scott's pine is tiny, not enough to do anything. It contains an average of 80 nanograms per gram of pine pollen. That's a very, a, na, a nanogram is, uh, if I remember correctly, it's either a, uh, I think it's a thousand, a thousandth of a gram or a billionth of a gram. It's um, a billionth of a gram, I believe. It's tiny, tiny amount, uh, not really enough to do anything, but you know, it, it, that's just the way it is. Um, the, and another you know, thing to consider, there's no human studies. This is a very important point. And I, and I when I discussed pine pollen in my, um, I had an article on herbal testosterone boosters in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. And in that article, I mentioned pine pollen and I pointed out that there's absolutely no human research, nothing, zero, zilch, to show that it increases testosterone in the human body. Even though it contains tiny amounts of testosterone, there's no human research at all. And as far as I know, there's not even animal research to show that it increases testosterone. The whole big feature about Scott's pine or pine pollen is that it contains testosterone. So what? If it doesn't contain, it, contain enough, uh, it's not going to do anything. And another thing to consider is that it's in the, what they call the glucoronated form. When you take, uh, let me explain that uh, brief biochemistry here. When you ingest testosterone orally, I'm not talking about anabolic steroids. Anabolic steroids have been manipulated structurally, structurally to reduce premature breakdown in the liver. But let's say you take straight testosterone orally. What's, hap what, what's going to happen is it's going to get to the liver, and the liver is going to break it down very rapidly. It's going to break down most of the oral dose of testosterone, 
And it does this through two processes. One of them is called glucoronation, which turns testosterone into uh, testosterone is actually fat soluble. And, and this uh, process, uh, which is, involves several enzymes, turns testosterone from a fat soluble substance into a water soluble substance. And that allows it to be excreted by the kidneys. And the type of testosterone that's found in pine pollen is the glucoronated form, meaning that it's kind of like already not usable by the, even if it had a, a good amount of testosterone, it's likely going to pass right through you. It's not going to do much at all. That's something to consider. Now, the, uh, the idea that pine pollen contains testosterone uh, first showed up in a study that was published in an obscure journal in 1971. The study showed that it can, uh, pine pollen contains testosterone, epitestosterone, and androstenedione. Androstenedione might be familiar to you. It was one of the first actual pro-hormone supplements. Uh, it was uh, introduced in the market, uh, to the market, the supplement market, in the late 90s. Uh, it was all based on one study of women, uh, which showed that when you gave women androstenedione, Androstenedione, stenid another hard pronunciation. Let's call it andro. When you gave women andro, the testosterone levels did go up. And this, this is true. If you provide women with andro, they always get an elevation of testosterone. However, when you give men andro, and usually in larger amounts, it usually takes the uh, pathway where it's converted into estrogen. This is one of the reasons why andro supplements fell out of favor after a couple of years. Uh, because, um, you know, they were sold as commercial food supplements, testosterone boosters, and people used it, noticed they really didn't work very well. And some people got estrogen-like side effects, such as gynecomastia, male breast tissue formation. Uh, so, now, there's another thing that, that's interesting about pine pollen. If you look at a lot of the articles, and there's dozens, well, I don't know, maybe hundreds of articles about the health benefits of pine pollen all over the Internet, a lot of them talk about how it contains testosterone, but they also mention that it contains dehydroepiandrotestosterone, or better known as DHEA. However, I could not find any research showing that pine pollen contains DHEA. What it does contain is something called epitestosterone, which is a kind of a metabolite of testosterone. Uh, interestingly enough, epitestosterone is the substance they look for when they do testosterone drug tests. Uh, uh, if a certain proportion of, um, of testosterone to epitestosterone is, is uh, beyond the normal scale, which is four to one, in other words, if you have uh, four times more testosterone than epitestosterone, it's considered positive for testosterone in a drug test. So epitestosterone is produced in the human body. It is found in pine pollen. But I think a lot of these people don't know the difference between epitestosterone and dehydroepiandro, DHEA. I'm not even going to try and pronounce it. But they're two different substances. And I don't think pine pollen actually contains DHEA. And even if it did, it probably, similarly, similarly to testosterone, it would probably contain trace amounts which don't have any significant effects in the body. Another thing to consider about pine pollen is that it is pollen. And, you know, a lot of people, like, are allergic to pollen, the hay fever. When I was a kid, I had hay fever. It developed into asthma when I was 12 years old. And to this day, I still have asthma. I have to take medication for it. And that's why I, I have insomnia, because some of these things are, they work some, somewhat like catecholamines, epinephrine. They stimulate the brain. And unfortunately, one of the side effects is uh, insomnia. I talked about my ins anti-insomnia program in the previous video, but the reason I have to take all these things is because of these asthma drugs that I have to take to prevent getting an asthmatic attack. But on the but getting back to this pollen, if you're allergic uh, if you're allergic to pollen and you take uh, uh, pine pollen, there's a chance you might have an allergic reaction. So anyone with a known uh, has hay fever, any reaction to pollen that you know about, definitely keep away from po pine pollen. Uh, now, an interesting fact about pine pollen trees is that they were once the most popular type of Christmas tree, but they were later supplanted by fir trees, which are now the most common Christmas tree. And if, let me get a little editorial comment in here. It has nothing to do with what I'm talking about, but it's just a kind of uh, a thing that kind of bugs me, and that's these Christmas tree situation. Every year, people buy real Christmas trees. These trees are cut down. They're put in somebody's living room for about three weeks before Christmas. 
and then within days after Christmas, they're discarded and dumped in the street. And you know, if you, you walk around in the street after Christmas, all you see is these 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 Christmas trees discarded on the sidewalk uh, to be picked up by garbage men or sanitation engineers, as they like to be called. Uh, and that kind of bothers me because um, these are living things. Trees supply oxygen to the environment. I think it's a horrible waste to cut down a tree and, and just stick it in a living room for three weeks and then throw it into the street. I, I think the solution, and I know they sell this, buy an artificial tree. Just use it, you know, bring it out from your garage or your basement, put it in your living room, maybe you know, put all your adornments on it, your Christmas decorations. Then when Christmas is over, put it back in your basement. Use it over and over again. Stop using actual live trees and discarding them like that. I think it's a terrible, terrible waste, and it just bugs the hell out of me when I walk down the street and see all these Christmas trees in the street. It's disgusting, actually. That's my personal opinion. Anyway, as, um, uh, a health effect of, uh, besides the testosterone, a health effect of pine pollen, and this is a genuine health effect, is that it can block the formation of age-related glycosylation end products. Glycosylate, uh, glycosylated end products, or, or also called ages, uh, have to do with the deposition of sugar in protein structures, and it kind of weakens the structures. Ages, as they're called, are one of the main causes of aging effects. It causes stiffness throughout the body, causes your connective tissues to get stiff with aging. Uh, I'm going to have an article in my Applied Metabolics about ages, again, advanced glycation end products and how to deal with them nutritionally in a very natural manner, which would make a big, big difference in the aging process. But the point is that some isolated cell studies and animal studies have shown that pine pollen seems to block the formation of ages. So that's that's a pretty good health effect. But again, this has only been shown in isolated cell studies and animal studies. There's no human evidence for it. Other, other animal studies show that uh, Pine pollen has fairly potent anti-inflammatory effects, but uh, you know it might be useful in, in, let's say, treating arthritis and other inflammatory diseases. But it's important to know that the type of pine pollen that's shown these effects is not the Scots pine that contains testosterone. So it's a different type of pine pollen. Pine pollen does contain over 200 nutrients, including vitamins and minerals, but the amounts are very low. They're in trace amounts. However, it does contain them. It's not too bad. And as I said, it's been used in Chinese medicine for over 3,000 years. <clears throat> you know, and uh, that, that's not proof of its efficacy because just some, just because of substance that, such as various herbs and pine pollen, just because they've been used in, for thousands of years doesn't mean that they work. I mean, that, that's, a lot of people say, well, it's been used for 3,000 years. It must work. Uh-uh. And there's, and there's something called the placebo effect. If you believe something's going to work, it will work. On the other hand, many of these substances do work, but that's another story. But don't go by because it's been around for years. It has to work. That's nonsense. <clears throat> you know, interesting enough, some of the, uh, I, I got to laugh at it, some of the uh, pine pollen articles that I looked at on the internet. Uh, much of the benefits of pine pollen are based on the fact that it's a seed. And because it's a seed, trees grow from it. So this has been, uh, you, the articles try and say that uh, humans will respond the same way as trees. In other words, if you take pine pollen, it'll make you grow which is so stupid, anyone believe, who believes that really is beyond any help that I could ever or anyone else could ever offer. Uh, I mean, these people have to be brain dead to think that taking a seed is going to make you grow like a tree. But some of these internet articles actually say that. Unbelievable. But there is some, some medical reports. There's a, 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 a medical study published in 2016 found that pine, pine pollen may help to treat a liver problem called hepatic fibrosis. Hepatic fibrosis simply means scar tissue forming in the liver. And right now there's a condition that's epidemic among in the world. 80 to 100 million Americans are estimated to have a condition called non-alcoholic fatty liver. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for the cause of it, mostly related to inactivity and consumption of excess refined sugars, especially fructose. I'm going to have an article on that also in my Applied Metabolic Newsletter and ways to deal with it naturally. It's a very serious problem because uh, uh, what they call non-alcoholic fatty liver is, re is also related to insulin resistance, the onset of type 2 diabetes, heart disease, 
uh, and other ills, including cancer. But the first stage of uh, liver failure is fatty liver. The second stage is cirrhosis or fibrosis, hepatic fibrosis. And uh, pine pollen apparently can treat the second stage of liver, uh, of uh, let's say the precursor to liver failure, which is uh, cirrhosis. So uh, that's a pretty useful, uh, you know, uh, aspect of pine pollen. <clears throat> but there are better ways to treat fatty liver than ingesting pine pollen, which I will discuss in my articles. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, I think I might mention earlier some articles, some of these articles, most of them, all talk about how pine pollen contains DHEA. And I think, again, no evidence for that at all. Uh, it does contain epitestosterone, which sounds a little bit like the chemical name for DHEA, but it's not the same thing. So, you know, that's about it. That's all I can say. Again, not much information on pine pollen, but that's the way it is. Uh, if you're using it, uh, if you're buying pine pollen in the hopes of increasing testosterone, I would suggest that you're completely wasting your money. It's not going to increase testosterone. It's not a reliable source of testosterone. If you want more information, the best in-depth information about nutrition, supplements, exercise science, hormonal therapy, anti-aging research, fat loss techniques that work, ergogenic aids, women's health and fitness, subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. Uh, it's uh, 12 issues a year. Each issue is about 40 to 50 pages. It's more of like an ebook than a newsletter. Uh, if you subscribe, I will send you an invitation to join my private Facebook, uh, I'm sorry, my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where each day I uh, post new articles on nutrition, exercise science, medicine, and preventive health. I also have an email, email portal on my Applied Metabolics uh, site where subscribers, only subscribers, can say, ask me brief questions. I'll be happy to answer them, but I don't, uh, I don't respond to unsolicited questions. Again, you're welcome to leave comments underneath these videos. Hopefully, there'll be nice comments. I don't respond to trolls. And, uh, you know, I mean, you can leave suggestions for future videos if you want. I'll try and, you know, meet your request. However, uh, don't, please don't ask about, again, don't, I don't want to sound redundant, but don't ask about steroid videos. I'm not going to do any steroid videos. I'm not going to just have my channel removed just to satisfy somebody's curiosity. It's not going to happen. So that's about it. Uh, my, uh, again, the address of my Applied Metabolics newsletter www.appliedmetabolics.com. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. Adopt a dog. Take care.